Welcome back everyone to another weather at a glance video in today's forecast we are going to be going over what you can expect to see for your 2024 Atlantic hurricane season. We are headed into another potential historic hurricane season um, and don't let those words scare you but we are looking at the potential for another record setting year as we take a look at some factors that will significantly impact this hurricane season all coming up in just a bit. All right, before we get into anything else, we need to look at the official NOAA CPC ENSO probabilities. This is going to tell you where we headed with our ENSO pattern here. And you can see here, so far we have an El Nino in place right now, and we are likely headed into neutral here very shortly, as of April, May, and June. You can see here, we are headed into that neutral phase, and then after that, we see the likelihood of La Nina. And this is where things become a bit risky for hurricane season, because La Nina as we will go into in here in a minute, you will see how this influences our hurricane season. But let's take a look. So right around the time, around June, July, and August, that's where we start to move from neutral to La Nina. And then by July, August, and September, right around when hurricane season starts up and peaks, we see this increased risk for La Nina around 70 to 80%. That is definitely showing some risks for La Nina development by the time of our Atlantic hurricane season. And that is not really a good term for this Atlantic hurricane season, especially for those who live in the coastal areas. Now, how do these patterns influence our Atlantic hurricane season? Well, first, let's go into El Nino here. So we're looking at El Nino. What happens during El Nino is we see increased wind shear along the southern portion of the northern Atlantic Ocean, and we do see less hurricane development. Now, this is going to be tricky to get your mind around because when we talk about wind shear, we think, okay, over here in Tornado Alley, for example, we need wind shear, especially for tornado development. That's a factor that a lot of storms need on a mesoscale event. But when we look over here in the Atlantic, when we're talking about hurricanes, increased wind shear can actually damage storms and it can rip them apart. Think of how something would become a very turbulent in the atmosphere. That will rip the storms apart, leading to less hurricane development. That is what we're currently seeing in El Nino years. Okay, so when we talk about an El Nino year, we see less hurricane development that is likely. Now, moving on to La Nina here, we can see that we have decreased wind shear and more hurricane development. Now, this is where we are headed this September, more than likely. As you saw with our chart there from NOAA, we do see the likelihood of a La Nina starting up around the time that hurricane season starts up and then peaks. So that is not a good story for our hurricane season because that is likely indicating that we will see decreased wind shear and more hurricane development. This September. Now, another factor that we need to look at are our ocean temperatures, specifically our sea surface temperatures, which are the fuel for these hurricanes. Again, convective available potential energy is a factor when we look at how an air parcel will rise. And if we have more warm, buoyant air at the surface and colder air aloft, that is only going to lead to increased storm development. And with that decreased wind shear, we're looking at the potential for hurricanes to spire up and form quickly. So let's go ahead and take a look here down at the southern portion of the northern Atlantic Ocean here. And you can see right above the equator, we have temperatures ranging from 24 degrees Celsius to about 29 degrees Celsius. So you can see these are very warm conditions, especially as of this time right now. We are seeing above average sea surface temperature anomalies. And this is only March, folks. So that's telling. Okay. Now, as we head into the summer, things are going to heat up. We're going to see more warm water build up here as we head into the Northern Hemisphere's summer, and that will lead into our hurricane season and thus lead to even warmer conditions than what we already see. Uh, that is why we are starting to see this potential for a big hurricane season, because not only do we have above average sea surface temperature anomaly here for the Southern portion of the Northern Atlantic, but we also see that decreased wind shear due to the La Nina that we are expected to go into, and that is only going to influence this further. Now let's look at the statistics. So on average, we usually see an annual number of named storms in the Atlantic every year around 14. That is the average annual number of named storms for the Atlantic hurricane season. Now, the average number of hurricanes are seven. And then the average number of major hurricanes, which is a category three and above, are three. So this is our average. This is over the years what we've seen, what we've developed, and kind of what has been the average overall. Now, moving on to our forecast. This is where we start to get interesting, and this is kind of in just to give you a rough estimate of what we're expecting to see this season. My thoughts going to you, so please don't take this very literally because I'm not giving you the exact number of storms, 
but this is likely what we could see with the factors that we have discussed so far. So I am forecasting the potential number of storms, name storms that is, for 25 plus this season. Now for forecast number of hurricanes, we're looking at 10 plus. I feel fairly confident that we'll see about 10 plus storms that become hurricanes. And then after that forecast number of major hurricanes are five plus. So anything five and above, I think we could see five and above category three and up hurricanes. That's kind of what we're looking at for this season. Now, as for our map, this is not really to give you, there's no legion because there's no real factor to determine here. But what we are looking at here is where I'm expecting people to get the most out of this season, basically. So we do see the potential kinds of ends up here for the first region up here towards Boston. Again, as you go further north, those waters get cold and that temperature uh, decreases at the sea surface level. And that's only going to decrease your potential for the hurricanes to travel up that way and your tropical systems to kind of fade away. So what we do see here is this is more or less your basic region. This means that you have the potential to see some tropical systems this season, uh, maybe get some tropical storm impacts, and maybe even see some Category 1, uh, maybe 2 hurricane impacts, uh, especially over here for the Gulf of Mexico as these move inland, if any do make landfall, that's what we're seeing. But this is basically your bare-bones basic region of kind of what you can expect. Now, moving on to the next region, uh, this is our second and final region. Again, I don't want to take this too high because I don't want to get people worried and worked up. But this is more or less where you expect more of the hurricane activity to occur. So anywhere within this region, I do expect the majority of the hurricane activity uh, that is going to be involved with the Gulf Coast and the Atlantic Coast to kind of happen within this region. So this doesn't mean you're going to see a hurricane this season, but this is kind of determining the likelihood of how much of a probability there is that you could see a hurricane this season. All right, I want to thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. A big thanks to today's sources, NOAA, National Weather Service, where all of those analogs and charts came from. A big thanks to our channel members, Chris Betty. Thank you so much for keeping the channel going. I would ask you to consider subscribing for more US forecasts free of charge. And I would ask you to consider following the Weather at a Glance official Facebook page for more inside information and complimentary personal forecasts when you message me on my Facebook page. Again, I want to thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.